Hey everyone, this is Aaron with Beers and Buddies uh, coming to you once again live of, on this Wednesday at 4.30 uh, West Coast and 7.30 East Coast. And right now, once again, I'm just waiting. Oh, and there's Crafty Historian. That's Scott jumping in. Go ahead. So hopefully the system will... Yeah, it says waiting on... There, there it goes. Yay. Hey, everybody! Oh, there it goes. So I've got Scott on the, uh, on the call. I, well, the, not call, but <laughs> the conversation. Yeah, We've got the conversation that I think right now I'm the only one uh, following this conversation. So, yeah. But you know what? We're in COVID lockdown, and I don't care because I'll talk to myself if I have to. <laughs> to keep from going crazy. That's right. I, don't, I mean, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I, I think my governor might, might need a few drinks to think clearly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so, uh, welcome everybody. Um, oh, and so there's Beckinator. Thanks for joining us. Beckinator, big Bex. Uh Beckinator, today you got in for a treat. You get to learn a little bit about Aaron and me. We're talking about our history. Oh, did she leave? Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe not. Anyways. Yep, so a little bit about <clears throat> us, but as always, we are uh, each going to open up a beer and talk about it too. And uh, yep. so I, right, I changed my beer at the very, very last second. So Scott and I usually text uh, each other prior to this. Hey, what are you going to drink? And so I had like a couple of ideas. I was like, so I went back to my fridge, searched again, <laughs> and tried to find something. I was like, okay, got to be different. Got to be different. And uh, because I haven't really been going out and like we talked about beer chasing, I haven't been going out and chasing beer. Uh, my my. My uh, selection is getting down to most of my super strong barrel aged beers that's left. With the exception that's what of a you few. Want. Yeah, uh, except for some of them are big old, like, giant bottles. Yeah, like wine bottles, 750 mils. Yeah. So, uh, but for my beer today, um, I ultimately mm -hmm. decided because uh, this is in part because their anniversary, their fifth year anniversary is coming up, is Goldwater Brewing Company. Oh, yeah. Good. So. Oh. So Goldwater uh, Brewing is uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, like right in the heart of uh, Old Town Scottsdale, which is – so if you've ever been to Scottsdale, you know where it is. Um, that's where all the nightclubs are in the valley uh, and things like that. But Goldwater uh, is a very, very um, – it's a <laughs> comfy, very uh, – Yeah, that's one way to put it. Quaint-sized um, uh, tap, tap room and brewery. I mean, it's, it's really, really uh, – small but what's really cool about it is actually it was built on top of a underground shooting range so you actually on certain days of the week uh, when they're open normally you can actually go down the stairs and they have their loggering is all in this in the their old gun range it's kind of neat because they actually put the tanks inside these long concrete two or well, shafts where you could used to have a firing range so you actually have like all these Ricochet marks where all the concrete has been like uh, destroyed from bu old bullets once upon a time. But yeah, all the uh, the loggering happens down in the basement. And they, they have a rooftop access, but even then, back to the beer. So this one actually I got uh, a few months back. I've been sitting on it. I have a can of it for Scott when uh, this all this kind of stuff blows over. But this one is called Beard of Zeus. Mm. So. So this one is actually really, really fun. Uh, so this one came out. When did this come out? I don't know. I wasn't there. No, you weren't. You definitely weren't. No, I definitely uh, wasn't. Okay, so this was actually uh, right around Valentine's Day. So this was in February. Is that an IPA? No. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so Beard of Zeus, uh, this right here is a – okay, I'm going to read off their actual description of this one. Beard of Zeus is an imperial stout with over 1,800 pounds of malt. Heaps of Madagascar vanilla beans with tons of locally sourced cacao nibs and fresh orange peel. This was done in collaboration with Arizona Wilderness Brewing, which is in Gilbert. So this is an imperial stout, not barrel aged, sitting at 12%. <clears throat> yeah, and he was worried about drinking high alcohol content beers. Well, hey, it's the it's size that matters. Not <laughs> yeah, okay. Case, it is the size that matters in this case. It's so not so... I'm 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 going off the rails again. Uh, last week I did a Belgian beer. Um, this this week 
I'm going straight up German on everybody. I'm going Spot and Doppelbach. Um, not I a like style of beer. Though. I love Doppelbachs. A um, little bit of malt, a little bit of sweet. Not twelve and a half percent aged on anything. It's um, not aged. This is just a really big imperial. A beast. Uh, Doppelbachs are an underrated beer. Um, I mean, this is technically a malt liquor out of Munich, Germany. Um, yeah. Optimator, uh, Spaten. Uh, but one of the things we'd mentioned last week, and you can see Aaron's got his glassware going on. If we talked about glassware, or at least we talked about talking about glassware, and then we never talked about it. Yeah, so, a little bit. I've got my Stein to put <laughs> my German beer right in there. That's right. You can hear I don't know if you guys can hear the glug, glug, glug. I know it says Ballast Point on it. That was back when I went to Ballast Point. Actually, fun story with the Ballast Point. We showed up. My wife and I uh, – no, it wasn't my wife. Uh, anyways, I was down in San Diego. <laughs> It was, it was his other uh, his other girlfriend. My other wife, yeah. We were in yeah, San Diego, one. and uh, we just happened to stop by Ballast Point, and it just happened to be their Oktoberfest. Nice. And uh, boom, got this stein. But you can see Doppelbox, um, you know, they're, they're dark in color. Um, estery, a little bit of sweet maltiness. Um, but they go down super easy. So where mine is dark and Aaron's is dark, I could drink like 18 of these – and still be able to hold this conversation. Funny you say that. Um, fun story, kind of going into the German beer. Well, um, so I'm going to re review my beer in just a second. I'm letting it open in the warm-up. <laughs> I want um, the orange to come out. <laughs> so one of my – I know it's, it's kind of weird, but, like, one of my favorite places to drink beer is actually in Las Vegas, and not where you think. Um, and actually, I love going to the Hofbrau House in Las Vegas. Me too. So, Hofbrau House is actually a German beer hall uh, patterned after the actual Hofbrau House in Munich, Germany. So everything, all the beer, all the food is imported from Germany overnight for the food. So it's all very, very German. Uh, they also have uh, German uh, like musicians playing uh, songs and like beer drinking games, like Stein holding contests or beer chugging contests for the ladies. Yep. And so it's a lot of fun. But anyways... So, Scott, that stein is what, 32 ounces? Um, <clears throat> I'm guessing it's about 32 ounces. I think I can yeah. fit two beers in here. So no, no, that's... no, not 32. No, I could only fit two 12-ounce bottles. Okay, so 24 ounces. All right, so, yeah. they, so a Hopper Half House, a they, actually, they serve in liters. <laughs> yes, hold on. It... Can you see it? Oh, Half yeah. liter. There it is. Yeah. So that's the mirrored, stein... I know. But... Yeah, so the, the steins they serve at Hopper House, they serve them in liters. And the last time I was at the Hofbrau House, I don't know how, but I drank three liters of beer in one dinner. And it was, and it was a Doppelbach. Uh, another one was a Hefeweizen. And another one was like a, oh gosh, I think it was a seasonal uh, that they had at the time. But I never, I don't know how I drank so much beer in one sitting, except it was good beer. It's it's easy drinking beer. I mean, the Germans don't do a whole lot. They just do what they do really well, you know. All right. But so, all right. So tell. So what are you tasting on yours? And, uh, and then I'll tell you what I'm tasting on mine. Well, it's it's a pretty standard Doppelbach. For those of you who aren't familiar with the style, you're gonna get estery notes on there from the from the various yeasts that you're pulling off. So you're gonna get some some fruity esters, uh, some sweet malt on there as well. But you also pull off some dark fruit. Um, raisins uh, predominantly on this particular um, prunes, that kind of thing. Uh, I know that's not everyone's forte, um, but I've had so much American craft beer recently that I'm just like painfully aching for European beer. Um, you know, I, I, I wish Yorkshire Brewing Company was near me so I could just go like stock up um, with some English malted milds that no one ever wants to drink oh that's why i have a uh, one of the valley's best czech style pilsners in, in my fridge for that yeah. reason so but that's that i mean nothing special um i got this i think i got this from uh la bodega which is a local liquor store i mean you can find this pretty much anywhere where mass-produced beer is sold it's not it's not a hard to find beer it's spot so, so well this beer um like i said i do have a can for scott so like once, and since it's a big stout, he'll be able to 
seller it for however long. So this has only been seller for like just a couple of months, a couple of months. So, so I usually try to buy three cans or three bottles of everything. Um, one to try right away. Another word to sell her and one to give to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> one to give me. <laughs> so this one, like the, honestly, I don't really smell any orange peel on it, um, which I'm not surprised. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see that the citrusy, like at least the, the, the smell of it is like the esters have gone away, but chocolatey, you know, it's right off the top. Um, mostly Little roast and chocolate. Up. Yeah. Mostly roast and chocolate. Uh, no vanilla at this point, but let me just give a sip. Yeah, I'm assuming that'll warm up. You find that with a lot of stouts, even if they're not barrel aged, they're huge, you know. Um, Ooh, the orange is actually really prominent. Um, is so, it? Okay. Yeah, uh, which is really interesting. Um, the orange and vanilla really comes. It tastes like a chocolate orange, um, mm. in a good way, and it's not overly sweet. Think it's not like a pastry stout or any like those like really super heavy sugary forward uh, stouts, like a lot of dessert stouts. This is just a imperial stout done well with orange, vanilla, and cacao nibs. I mean, it's just, it's really good. No surprising coming from Goldwater and Wilderness. Uh, we did, or I did once a, uh, it was a, few, a couple of years back, a uh, <clears throat> chocolate orange kind of uh, competition. And they had Southern Tier. Good one. It had Iron Fire who won, and that was a barrel aged beer. I think it was freaking 15% alcohol. Um, oh, and then there, I can't remember who the third one I had. But, oh, that's right. Um, I remember you doing this one now. Yeah, yeah, and that was five score and eighty thousand beers ago. But I, I, I don't actually like chocolate oranges at all. I don't like to eat them. Um, I think they're weird, and you smack them, and they break, and it's just strange. Um, but I enjoy drinking that. Um, and I really thought that Southern Tears chocolate orange beer would 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 suit me better because I freaking love Southern Tear. Was it um, uh, too sweet for you? No, it just was too muddled for me. It didn't have yeah. enough uh, of what want, I was hoping. You wanted for. more orange? No, I wanted just more all the way around. That was oh. in the moment when I was like super into like beers that like popped you in the face. Now I'm like Dr. Bach, you know. Um, <laughs> so that's probably why Iron Fire won because that thing would have taken the the, the enamel off your teeth. Um, it's a super great beer, but it's like if you were, I, I would. I would not encourage anyone to drink that beer by themselves. I don't remember the name of it. Um, I'm gonna look it up. You you talk. I'm gonna look that up because I don't remember no. the name of that stupid beer. Is. No, I'm just I'm hoping to let this warm up. But uh, no, I'm, so I did when I first got the beer to the zoo. So I drank it right away, and uh, that at that time the orange was actually really really subtle. It was almost like non-existent. It was more in the smell. Um, as this is aged for a couple of months, the uh, smell is really gone and it's kind of it's been inverted where. The orange peel, I think the bitterness from the orange is really starting to impart into the beer a little bit more. Um, the sugar uh, has, like, toned down. Uh, no, like, it's just a really well-balanced beer. I'm glad I was able to get it. Um, but like I said, Goldwater's anniversary beer is coming up. Um, I was hoping they were going to do some big stout or something special, but they're not. They're doing, uh, I want to say, a, a kettle sour as their anniversary beer. That's good. Yeah. But... So in jumping into um, basically uh, talking about like oh yeah four score and eighty thousand beers ago as Scott says going back in time uh, the, back the main time. yep well the main topic of uh, today's conversation was uh, how beers and buddies kind of came about and for that to happen you really have to go even further back in time uh, before we could drink because uh, Scott and I have actually known each other since nineteen ninety seven God that sounds so old. <laughs> so back when we weighed less and things were perkier <laughs> gosh, I, I, I probably weighed about half my weight and maybe 20 pounds at that point really I'm, well i'm about 200 pounds these days so i think i weigh about 20 pounds more than i did then yeah i was also yeah i, I was a twig <laughs> yeah. so i probably yeah I, I think maybe at the my heaviest at that age was maybe 145 so maybe not half the weight but like so like three quarters of me <laughs> this is what we came on here to talk about today is how fat no, we wait. got <laughs> hey so it's the coronavirus it's the the covid i ate all of my snacks within the first week <laughs> oh, gosh. but uh so just kind of kind of uh jump in so scott and i actually for the most part like our uh, teenage years was spent growing up in southern california um, for me, I've lived all over the place. Uh, I grew up 
Well, I was technically born in Illinois, but I only lived there for a year, my for my existence. So I can't really claim a, that really as my home. Um, Lincoln, land of Lincoln, land of Lincoln. But because um, <laughs> yeah, after a year after I was born, we my family moved to uh, Valencia, California, which is near Six Flags Magic Mountain. And then we went to Camarillo, which is a little bit more north, like Thousand Oaks area. Lots of like that's where a lot of the really monster strawberries come from. Um, but after that, then lived in Arizona for a while, then to Georgia, and then back to California again. But this time was in San Diego. And this time, uh, gosh, we moved, I want to say 1995 is when we first moved. me. I wasn't there. No, no, no. I'm trying to think because the Olympics were in 94, right? We're moving to 96. Yeah, we're talking about five score and 80 beers ago, dude. I don't know when the Olympics were. I want to say the, the Atlanta Olympics, I want to say it was in 1996. Um, okay, uh, so let's wanna, go with that. So I want to say it was 95 uh, when we cause we were thinking, hey, this would be really cool to just house swap at that time to somebody like in Orlando who wants to go to the Olympics. Like, hey, we'll go to Disney World. But we ended up moving instead. Uh, so uh, started basically going to middle school there. And uh, by my eighth grade year, in the second semester is when Scott and I actually met. That's when I showed up. <clears throat> I hadn't been in San Diego until my eighth grade year, second semester. So, yeah. Oh, really? For some reason, I thought you were there like the whole year. Mm -mm, no, I moved mid-semester. That's why I failed mm. the whole freaking – I almost failed eighth grade, man, because where I came from, the land – well, never mind. <laughs> it was not the land of high standards. Let's just put it that. And, uh, yeah, I almost failed every class that year. I'm lucky I, I made it into uh, made it into high school. To be fair, it's lucky I made it into college. So let my students bank on that one. You know? <laughs> so, so Scott is born and raised Californian. Yeah, unfortunately. I love the beer scene. I don't love the state itself. But that that's neither here nor there. But, yeah, we met. <clears throat> and I don't want to go too deep in all this because, we, you know, beers and buddies – not history and buddies, although I am a crafty historian. But <clears throat> <clears throat> got a little stuff in there. Yeah, um, I have COVID, but you can't catch it through the through the thing. Don't worry about it, Aaron. I don't have COVID. I'm just being. <laughs> I was like, what the? Crap? Um, we met. We met in uh, in a choir class when we were both really going for a uh, two separate roles, but roles in a play where they would have been together. And uh, I thought he was, was really strange. Who's of the opera? Who's yeah, I thought he was really strange because whenever he'd sing, he'd do this weird thing with his hand. And uh, I didn't I know what the hell that. he was doing. I, yeah, I, I was just like, there's this weird freaking guy, and now I got to sing with him. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's where we met. Um, the show wasn't very good. Um, we were good. We, we were okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it, this was middle school. This is eighth grade now. Uh, so, oh, so look, uh, G Pop Bane. So that's actually that's Mike. That's my father. So that's your father-in-law. <laughs> I'll drink to that because that guy's legit. <laughs> fun. So I'll, a little bit of fun story. We'll maybe share about G Pop um, at some uh, basically on uh, our wedding cruise. Well, my my wife's on. So oh, and there's a that's all wife. <laughs> your wife ducking, already knows. Ducking that. and diving. She's already she's already laughing in the background. What are you but, doing? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> now your wife joined. Yeah, I love how she's wife. in the room and she's joining. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. She's, she's supporting. But uh, anyway, so, <laughs> so Scott and I were in uh, basically a choir class in eighth grade. Uh, and then that summer, my dad was so tired of living in uh, the town called Rancho Penasquitas. It's just north of Miramar where they filmed Top Gun, uh, just outside San Diego. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they did. yeah, okay. Don't question me on that. I've had and... some Doppelbach. <laughs> so my dad, he hates uh, living in most suburbia. Um, and that was... So we had the opportunity to live in a town outside of San Diego called Ramona. A village. <laughs> it's, it's a very small town. So to give you an idea, so Ramona is about 30 minutes east of like Miramar, like northeast into the mountains. Um. There's only like three highways to get to it, and there if, so, if there's an accident on one of them, you're kind of screwed. Okay, but, to uh, be fair, here you go. Because we're doing the census right now, this is going to change. But as of 2010, there was only 20,000 people in Ramona. Ramona. I believe yeah, it. Two, yeah, so just small. So it's, it's a, uh, and there was less people at that point. 
Um, but anyways, Ramona is a, it's a horse town. So a lot of people had horses, um, or just property and land. And my dad liked space and we mm -hmm. lived on, well, we had two houses we rented, but was, the second house we lived in longer, that one had like an acre and three quarters. So we were like on a ton of dirt and grass that I had to mow every year. So anyway, so I'm living halfway an hour, halfway, half an hour away from Scott. And for some reason, I don't know how, I can't recall but we, we just hit it off so well that we kind of forced our parents to drive us up and down until we can get our licenses. Yeah, we did. I don't know how that happened. I really, yeah. No. No, I don't. I don't know how that happened. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but we did. And then once we got our licenses, then, then, you know, that's what we did. And then eventually, fast forward, I eventually ended up living with him for a few months uh, when I was in college. Um, and that was interesting. Um, although they made me work landscaping, which. No, my dad made you work. I didn't. I made yeah. you do my chores. <laughs> yeah, that's because you're lazy ass. Um, and I, that's no joke. This fool, and I know this has nothing to do with beer, but this fool, his mom would give him chores to do. And then he would do like a half ass job. And I was like, she said we can't go anywhere until this is done to her satisfaction. He's like, well, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, dang it, man. And so I would end up cleaning the toilet, doing all this stuff just so we could get out of the house. And uh, But, but it, it all worked out. It all worked out. Yep. The toilet was better off for me anyways. It was training. It was training. Yeah, for one. Yeah, for my job. <laughs> so, yeah. so fast forward a few more years. So Scott's going to college in Riverside. And then at that point, my family um, – decides to move to Arizona. Uh, long story short, my dad was like, you know what? Uh, he's able to get back into his, uh, his original career, which is aerospace. So designing parts for aircraft and military aircraft and stuff. And the only way that I could ever afford a house uh, at the, in my foreseeable future was to go to a place where houses are affordable. So uh, that, at least that's my parents' mentality. So we moved in 03 to um, to Arizona, and we've pretty much been here ever since. Uh, so it's kind of funny because up until now, about half my life has been in California, and actually now um, it's dwindled down where most of my life has been spent in Arizona these days. Yeah, that's why you're so hot. Yep, <clears throat> it's really great. Yeah, but I never made it out of Southern California. Um, I have this, this fear that I'll be here until we fall off the planet. Um, with an earthquake until California falls off. <laughs> yeah, and actually becomes an island. Um, hey, but yeah, it was property. interesting because Aaron, after after he moved, we we kept in touch. Um, but then he he went off and did a mission. He was he was doing a religious mecca, if you will. Although he's not Muslim, um, but sure, let's go with that. Um, and he was gone. I know, right? He was gone for two years and my life changed somewhat radically during those two years because I ended up getting engaged and getting married and he was supposed to be at the wedding, but <clears throat> he wasn't because, you know, I wasn't that important. But you did call me that day. I think it was either a day or the day before. I don't remember. I don't either. But, um, <laughs> Shows how important yeah, I don't it was. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, right. Um, but then he came back, and uh, I don't really remember much after you got back other than I think it was just sort of like we fall step in line. I think we ended up going to Six Flags at one point because that was kind of yeah, a thing right, we did yeah. when we were a kid. We did that a lot. Um, fun story, I almost flipped a Saturn once going into Six Flags. Um, actually, Aaron and I have both almost killed each other in different cars, although his would have been much more epic because it was a Corvette. Uh, do you remember oh, that yeah. when you're driving, you're oh, like, yeah. you damn near lost guitar. I was like, oh, God, we're going to die. Or the time in your Porsche when you took air. Oh, that was fun. That was scary because it was so dark in the street. I couldn't see. Um, yeah. I, was yeah, the that was, yeah. Yeah. Or the time you hit my car with your Porsche. Your car got <laughs> in my way. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got you hit it. Um, but uh, we went to Six Flags, so that's kind of a thing that we did. And uh, and then I don't, I don't know exactly – how the step in line with drinking beer came up. But I know that I I, by the time you got back, I was already into craft beer. Right. So um, about the time I came back man. from serving my mission. Uh, so just for a heads up, I was raised uh, LDS, also known as Mormon. 
so uh, I am not practicing uh, of my, uh, my the faith of my birth, but um, that's here and over there. By the time I came off my mission, uh, Scott was yeah do, you're you're doing like your Sam Adams a lot of Sam Adams at that point. A lot of Sam Adams at that time. Yep. So that was Scott's uh, drinking, and then it wasn't until oh uh, goodness. Six seven years ago, I didn't know it was that long. Uh, I think that might have been fourteen. It's about six years ago. Yeah. So about six years ago, um, yeah. I actually I did start to get into drinking alcohol. I actually started drinking cocktails uh, first, so um, like thin mints and uh, just various mixed cocktails. They're good. Tastes like a Girl Scout cookie. It's awesome. Don't grimace. It's good. I still love cocktails. Uh, <laughs> no, I still love cocktails. And then uh, graduated to white wines, uh, and then I graduated to red wines. Um, beer it was always the elusive one uh, because for me, drinking beer like is I was always introduced to American domestic gross Bud Light. Cr I mean, just crap beer. Let's just be honest. It's just bad beer, like horse pee beer. <laughs> Straight and, panther piss. <laughs> yeah. So my wife, uh, who actually loves craft beer, uh, and so she and I went to go visit. We actually went to go do a Disneyland trip, which we usually do about once or twice a year. And Scott gives me crap for that. But we were actually we were, we were staying. That's a whole different conversation. <laughs> trying to open up that Pandora's box. So uh, we're staying at Scott and uh, his wife's house. And Scott, uh, at this point, this is at the height of his craft beer buying. He, he had two fridges, like full to like overflowing with beer of various sorts. Yeah. And, uh, and so Scott was convinced to try to get me to like, like craft beer. And I'm like, I just, nope, 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 nope. I have not had good experiences. So the first craft beers that I've ever liked, and this is kind of weird. And most people don't like them uh, right off the bat. There's two. One of them was a Imperial stout by Southern tier. And the, uh, forever, they will forever be one of my favorite um, styles. And I, I still have is, a bottle. <laughs> oh, well, is the uh, creme brulee imperial stout from Southern Tier. Now, this is one of the older bottles. Um, their their logo has since changed, but this is a burnt sugar and vanilla imperial stout that like sits at ten percent without any barrel aging. And as the, the best part about this beer is it's. You get the, those roasted notes, but the vanilla really hits you in that burnt sugar. It's it's subtle, but as you let it warm up, the burnt sugar just really opens up and just tastes awesome. It's a dessert beer. It is definitely Yeah, absolutely. It was a pastry stout before. A pa I mean, it's not a pastry stout, but it's kind of along that line. Yeah, um, I, long before I would that say it became a thing. Yeah, I wouldn't even say it's a, as sweet as a lot of these pastry stouts I'm having these days. No, but, it's got a roastiness to it. Yep, it's really, really solid. Um, and then the other beer that Scott had, um, I don't, we, st we still don't know who it was made by, um, it's, but it was a strawberry rhubarb sour beer. Oh, I think it was the brewery. Well, no, it wasn't. It was somebody else. Windowsill? Um, no. I think it was Windowsill. Windowsill, that's by the brewery. Yeah. Oh, well, I thought that was the name of the brewery. But anyways, um, I absolutely loved that beer. Uh, that was, so between. So I went straight to sours and imperial stouts. I skipped right over IPAs and lagers and red ales and brown ales. And straight for the hardcore stuff. And um, for me, at least, so that's where kind of like our uh, beer drinking kind of started. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I, I was drinking I was drinking a lot of beer at that time, a lot of different types of stuff. Um, if you've watched any of these that we've done in the last couple of weeks, out of necessity because good lord we need to talk to more i mean i love your wife and i love my wife but there comes a point when i need to talk to someone who's not my wife and children you know what i'm saying like like <laughs> if you're out there get me out right um but i i was out just trying to get as much beer as i possibly could and i i would end up dumping a lot of beer because i would buy so much and then we go bad and i didn't really know what i was doing i was just buying beer because i thought it was a cool thing to do um, but luckily, I think I had so much there that it, that it offered an opportunity. Um, oh. Love, Craft Phoenix. Thanks for joining us. I'm sure we'll be talking here shortly about um, craft beer in Phoenix because actually, I think a lot of our time drinking beer has been in Phoenix. Um, yeah. I know. And, and, and brewery for brewery, I hate to say this, but brewery for brewery near location, I think, uh, I think Arizona has a better 
option for beer success, or success rate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just every brewery has, well, I don't say every brewery, there's a couple, but many of them, um, just knock them out of the park. There's, 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 you know, you think of Goldwater, you think of McFate or fate. I don't know what they are now. Uh, they, they're going back to fate. And then, yeah, okay. that's an, that's an interesting story, but I'll say that for another time. Yeah. Um, not every <laughs> LOL. Yeah. <clears throat> Lovecraft Phoenix probably knows the, the ones I'm talking about. And if you do, please don't note it. Or if you do, I just won't say yes or no. Yeah. Um, see, they are, yeah they're fate again. Perfect. Um, but Arizona is one of the few states that I can say I've had almost every brewery in the state. Um, I'm sure there's some I haven't hit. Uh, I know in um, Tombstone, obviously, I haven't hit. But nonetheless, mm. my point is that I was chasing beers, and I was going to every brewery and any brewery I could go to. And uh, I just wanted to share that kind of culture because when I got into it, um, I think – I think by the time I got into craft beer, which was 2011, I'd just been laid off from a job, and I didn't have a whole hell of a lot to do. So I found a local brewery and um, started drinking beer, <clears throat> and I met the owner, and I was like, hey, I don't really know much about beer, but I can sell pretty much anything. Um, do you need any help? And he goes, yeah, we actually need a salesperson. So I was like, okay, cool. And that was at Inland Empire Brewing Company, uh, mm. formerly owned by Paul Murphy, good buddy of mine. Um but it was through Inland Empire Brewing that I learned more and more about beer. Uh, I learned about the making of beer, the different styles of beer, tastings. Uh, and then I got to know a lot of brewers. And uh, I think that's that's what helped me. And I think that that type of culture uh, and learning about <clears throat> the kind of brotherhood that connected a lot of these breweries together. And I think you still feel that a lot in the Phoenix Valley, I think. I don't know. I'm not there. Um, I th but... Um, I wanted to share that with people. So it wasn't just, hey, here's a good beer. Let's get trashed, right? And it was never about that. Um, at least for me, it wasn't. I don't know about Aaron. I I think Aaron <laughs> likes the feeling of more than I do. I hate that feeling. Well, no, no you're, I wouldn't say that at all. <laughs> okay. So, like when, so when Scott and I, Scott wanted to introduce me to doing craft beer. So Scott's like, hey, what type of breweries out there? Let's go see what Arizona's got. And so... And to this day, this is pretty much how we drink. Um, we we brewery hop when we travel. A so, lot of breweries. Like, in fact, I'd be interested to know what's the most breweries you've ever hit in a day because I bet we'd beat you. Oh, you? Well, you and I have done more. No, I think, no, no. If anyone's following this, oh, I oh, bet you and I have hit more breweries in a day than anybody <laughs> who's watching this. And if we're wrong, then to you. Oh, gosh. If your liver and your... <laughs> your, your bladder can keep up with it <laughs> because so when scott and i started doing getting really into the craft beer scene especially in arizona um so at that point i want to say in the valley there was maybe like gosh maybe a dozen at most it may be that maybe like maybe 12 at the time the you at the time you took me the very first brewery you took me to was north mountain so that's well, and, right. That was our our first brewery trip. So we started. In, uh, the idea was to start in Central Phoenix, and kind of work our way back uh, to my home. And Scott and I, whenever we do these brewery hops, we really don't drink a ton. Uh, we usually we'll get a flight, and we'll split it, and drink more water than you can imagine. And so then we go to the next stop. So the idea is we don't ever want to really get drunk. We might get a little bit of a buzz, but not much. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it does happen. Don't get us wrong. It, oh, it yeah. does. It does. So, yeah, I want to say, like, in that first trip, at first we hit yeah, North Mountain. Um, uh, at that time, it was Fate. Fate. That was, but there was the original location. The original smaller. location. We also but went to Scottsdale, the Scottsdale Brewing Company. I uh, was up there. Love them, by the way. They're, yeah, they're really good IPAs, too. <laughs> um, also, I'm trying to think if there's anybody in Central Phoenix. We went to, did we go to Sun Up that trip? I don't know. I don't remember. It might have been a, a different trip. I don't think we did. I don't think Sun Up was until the next time. It may have been that trip. I know we hit a lot. I want to say we hit almost all of them from basically Central Phoenix East. Um, we hit just about every single brewery there was uh, at that time. And this was, granted, it's grown so much exponentially. Yeah. Um, so, like, Ren House, who was one of the more popular okay. ones, wasn't, wasn't even open yet. Um, no. <laughs> So that wasn't until years later. So whenever Scott and I hit these places, like, 
we will do this. Likewise, when I visit uh, like California, like the last time we uh, were there, we hit a lot of ones in Torrance, uh, and Long Beach, Long Beach, and uh, so. <laughs> And then also we went to Portland. Uh, so Portland was a definitely an interesting experience. So that when Scott challenges you, like, how many breweries have you done in a single day? Let's see if you can um, – let's say, okay, well, this is our cor- course of four days. So yeah, in, course in of, four days. That's, in yeah, four this days. is four days. So you no, can divide is, it equally if you want. But So in four days, we went to 24 breweries, two distilleries, and two wineries in four days. <laughs> and – yeah. <laughs> I dropped the mic. Yeah, that was, and you know what? I never felt buzzed once. No. Uh, no, that's not true. That's not true. Um, I think if you watch our outtakes when we were um, filming from um, Ecliptic, Eclip, yep. Eclip, we were, I was a little, I was a little, not spasty, but I was definitely feeling it then. But we were walking very vast di- distances to where we were going. Um Portland's an interesting trip. Check out our YouTube channel. We've got two or three videos on there from, from Actually, Portland. There's three. There's three. Um, and we didn't even scratch the surface, guys. I mean, there's so many damn breweries in Portland. You can't even imagine. Um, almost any time you turn around, there's a brewery. Um, I mean, there was one point where we were at a brewery, and I turned and I said, well, there's a rogue tasting room, uh, which had not fully been developed. If you remember, they only had like four beers there. Well, the they were doing construction on the exterior. Um, yeah, they were really doing a, a, a brand new tasting room. And so, Scott, and I, we, it's like, let's just change it up. Yeah, but it was fun, Portland. Uh, and, you know, when we get done with this whole COVID thing and we get another chance to hit some place, I know there's a couple places we'd like to go. I know Michigan's Colorado. a big, big place. Denver, it would be nice to go. Um, I, I think for both of us, if we could ever collectively get to Jay Wakefield together, that would be huge. I know you've been there. I've not. Um, and then well, just because I, I would love actually, to go to Belgium. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Yeah. But you know, geez, we're, yeah, we're going to stand at the door of the monastery. I got a banana beer. Yeah. Hey, time to open. Time to open. Um, Put your prayers. <laughs> oh, jeez, That's not okay. That, why do you think the beer oh. tastes so good? No, well, and that's the thing. It's like for I, for us, like uh, I would actually, aside from going to like yeah, Colorado, I really would like to get to like the Midwest and Northeast of the U.S. Um, to because beer is so regional as far yeah. as tasting, which is what which surprised us the most when so when Scott and I do these brewery hops, we usually do them for a course of like a weekend. Um, so like the next round, Scott's probably going to come out to Arizona because he hasn't been up to Northern Arizona uh, breweries in at least three, four years. And there's a lot of changes since then. Yeah. Flagstaff, Prescott, uh, Sonoma, Sedona, not Sedona, Sonora. Sonora. Sedona, 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 yeah, Sonora's. Sonoma, you know, here in California, Sonoma. Um, but, uh, even then, like, but when we went up to Portland, that was the biggest surprise I think for us because we were expecting because oh it's beer mecca. There's more breweries per capita than any other place in the world. Yada 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 yada. And we get up there and the the flavors that they were presenting were so different than what we were experiencing in California or Arizona. Yeah, I think the flavor profiles are a lot more similar between our two states. Um, but you, you know, you just go up a little bit. I say a little bit. If you're not familiar with California and you follow us, California is freaking huge. It's really three, it's like three regions, realistically. Yeah, it's it's massive, right? I mean, you can take a look at the East Coast and say there's like nine or ten states that make up the Eastern Seaboard. Well, California thir- makes up more thirteen. One of, yeah, well, no, the Eastern Seaboard, not the yeah. South. Yeah, I'm not counting Virginia <laughs> or the Carolinas of Georgia here. Don't lecture me on history; it's what I do. Okay, you see those degrees in the back? Yeah, those are history degrees. You see that? Yeah. At any rate, that's not the point. The point is, California's massive. You get to Portland, and it is a very different beast. The beers were radically different. And it it was actually, it was both refreshing and frustrating all at the same time because we couldn't find what we wanted, which was a big-ass stout. And this, well, we, found, we found one. We found yeah, one. Yeah. And we were there but, over St. Patty's Day, too. We had a hard time finding even Irish stouts. We only had a few. Yeah, they, it was it was crazy, um, but it was it was a good time. 
definitely some misses, some hits. Uh, I mean, I think of Ex Novo for sure. That was that was a huge mm. hit there. And for whatever reason, I can't ever remember. Was it Upslope? Is that the name of the one that I really really liked? Oh, upright. Upslope is in Utah. Upslope is uh, it's like a Colorado one, I believe. Yeah. What, what's the one that I like? The open fermentation. It's upright. Upright. Okay. Well, I want, up let me double check. I have my handy dandy. I think it's upright. But I tell you what. You are not more dedicated than we are when you try to find a brewery. If it takes you 15 minutes <laughs> after you have arrived to find the brewery, then you're That's not upright. that dedicated. Yeah, upright. So we we get, to be fair, I don't know how many breweries we'd hit that day, but it was a lot. Gosh, um, it, we were we coming, did a minimum of like six to eight breweries a day. Yeah. And that's and walking I'll give kudos, in between the two. I'll give kudos to Aaron's wife because she's celiac and she couldn't drink these beers and she she was a trooper the whole day. But we, we were leaving um, Widmere Brothers, and we only went there because we were walking towards Upright, and we were like, oh, Widmere Brothers. Why not? Went there. Loud and then, AF. By the, oh, it was so loud. It was band. loud. The beers were decent, actually. Mm -hmm. I was surprised how good the beers were. But we're, it's nighttime by the time we get to this joint, <clears throat> and it's a coffee shop. Aaron, who's the navigator, well, right? There's no, he's there's like, no signage. Over here. There's no yeah. signage. Nothing. And he's like, we're here. And I'm like, it's a damn coffee shop. Like, it's a coffee shop. There's no beer in here. And it's closed. But the door is open that you can get into. Well, it's like down this flight of stairs. You got to kill a it's dragon. Down two flights of stairs. Yeah. It's crazy. In fact, if you watch our YouTube videos, you'll see. We, we went back and retraced it. It's crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hands down for me, best brewery in Portland. That Their Pilsner they had. That was for that me the was, shiny thing. That I was, a, that was an Italian that. style one too. Yes, it was so crisp, so delicious. And then just their open fermentation. I, I love that because you're going to get a little bit of the wild yeast and get a little bit of a unique flavor. I like them better than the um, Great Notion. Uh, no, well, I liked them better than Great Notion. I didn't like Great Notion as much as you guys did. Um, I felt like it was a little overhyped. Great beer, don't get me wrong, great beer. But a little overhyped for me. Yeah, but I mean, I'm so, thinking of that. Was it Cascade? Oh, Cascade did their, their Sour House. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although they uh, had the best beer of the of the weekend, just because of the reminiscence of the. Yeah, uh, well, even then, like, these the Cascade Sour, uh, it's man, they just had some amazing beers there. Um, and I've been meaning to, if I ever do a uh, homebrew of sours, I really want to try to recreate what they did, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to. That was, it was a, um, it was basically like, an, uh, they wanted to call it like an apple cider kind of thing. It was a, it was a sour beer that was apple aged. Butter. Yeah. But it, it tasted like apple butter. It was, don't think butter, like, but like, it's not butter. Yeah. Not but like, like popcorn, not like diacetyl, not that. No, 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 no. Uh, but think like this, it wasn't like an apple sour ale, but it had like these warm, like, like almost brown baking sugar, spices. baking yeah. spices. Oh, it's so good. And it was, it tasted just like my mother's um, brown, um, apple butter, which was just, that's one of those things like I still miss. But uh, it's, it was just an amazing beer. But see, for me, like for, for in all of our travels, so Scott and I will try to do this. And I actually have footage from last year's birthday. I still have it on my phone. I still need to edit it and put it up is when we did it. So even though this trip, so last year we went on a cruise for my birthday. Um, we went on a carnival cruise out of uh, L.A. and went down to oh, Long Beach. Out of Long Beach. Oh, Long Beach, L.A. Yeah. So for those who aren't familiar, in case, well, in case someone follows, like I didn't know L.A. had a port. Yeah. They don't. They don't. It's Long Beach. <laughs> but um, anyway, so it's a it's a standard crew that uh, ships out of there like a couple times a week, at least when under normal conditions, and it goes yeah. down to, I, if depending on the type of trip, it goes to Catalina. Um, That's a and, and, and or Ensenada. So my birthday, we did the Ensenada one. It's just a really quick three-day trip. Uh, anyway, so for this brewery uh, trip that we did, uh, for this brewery hop, we actually – so Carnival actually has their own craft beers. There is a – gosh, it was a – oh, goodness, it was like a red ale. And there's, I think, an IPA, and I want to say – That was it. <clears throat> no, there was another there's one. There was a third. Oh. It was, it's like Red Frog is the name of their brand. Um, so actually I still have the footage of it on my phone. I've been meaning to edit it and put it on. It's you should like, do it. I should. You it's should. It's a year old, but it's a hey, for reminiscing of vacations. So the trip, which was interesting because then we went to all, uh, went to 
a handful of craft breweries in Ensenada, which was quite the experience. Um, <laughs> yeah, to say the least. So there was, there, was a, there was one specifically we were hoping that we could have um, gone to, but because it was on a Sunday, um, their hours were different, and the, the boat only is in dock for so long, we didn't want to get stuck in Ensenada. But went to another one, and um, we had to walk through some very scary-ass parts of Mexico. <laughs> that was the, and that was Aaron. He's like, and this dude is about as chill as it gets. There's, there's four of us, right? There's four dudes walking through this area, and Aaron's like, nah, it's this way. And the rest of us are like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Where is he taking us? Like, we're going to freaking get, we're going to die here. And it's not because it's Mexico. Well, the interesting, so Mexico doesn't have zoning laws like the, we do in the United States. So you can have really businesses kind of just cherry pick like wherever. Um, and it was. And, and, it and was. so this brewery, so we're walking in this very scary part of town. And I'm following GPS. It's like, oh, hey, it's right here. It's right here. And we don't see anything. And then turn around the corner and boom, there's this actually kind of impressive brewery uh, at least like it's a tasting room because uh, um ensenada is on the more coastal where the their home brewery but anyways so even then we got to brewery hop uh in parts of mexico which was really kind of a cool experience but still we yeah. have not been to <clears throat> yeah the midwest and to the northeast which is where i would like to go and also to europe to drink actual european beer yeah, yeah. i you know i would if i was in europe i would just say goodbye i'm not being able to come back because i would drink so much beer my liver would just tap out or you do a, a scotch tour in scotland mm. <laughs> see you now that raises another thing i'd much rather drink bourbon you'd rather see you rather do the uh was it the bourbon um the bourbon bourbon road? well no would i rather okay. do the bourbon trail or go to scotland no i'd rather go to scotland but <laughs> if they had a Scotch trail in the United States, I'd much rather drink bourbon. Or if they had a bourbon trail in Scotland, I'd rather do that. But I'd rather go to Scotland than go to Kentucky. See, what's interesting is, so some friends of ours, they actually, when their honeymoon was to Ireland. And their whole honeymoon was doing Irish distilleries. So they stuck pretty much did the whole perimeter of the island hitting as many distilleries as possible. That was their honeymoon. They're both uh, very uh, passionate whiskey drinkers. Maybe they just don't like each other and they're trying to forget who each other are. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so, but that's pretty much, so yeah, Scott and I, we have uh, lived at this point <laughs> since 1990. Okay, so we've been uh, best friends since 1997, officially. Seven. Okay, and here, we, so that's 23 years? 13 years? Yeah, uh, 23. 23 years. So at the, so it's, it gives you an idea how long we've known each other. So like we both know where the the bodies are buried, and so. <laughs> and there are and there are bodies. Okay, don't let that. It's not a joke. Don't cross us. We're beers and buddies. But if you're no longer a buddy, <laughs> okay, that's not true at all. None of that's true. <laughs> right. But and that's the thing too. So like, even though like Scott and I live about dri driving wise, as a crow flies, it's different. But driving is about five hour drive, which is not that bad. It's Obviously. not that bad unless it's, it's the summer and you drive a Chevrolet that doesn't have air conditioning. Then you have to leave at three a.m. so that you don't die. And that so, brings us back to the Disneyland comment from earlier. Oh goodness. Because Aaron comes down here and he goes to Disneyland, and I go up there and I see him. Why? Because I heart him more. Speaking of Disneyland, interesting thing. Uh, just kind of a total um, side shoot. So the so Bottle Logic Brewing actually recently okay. really, they recently released a beer um, that was meant to be sold exclusively in mm -hmm. California Adventure. Yeah, they were going to uh, do house beers for them, which was awesome. I thought that was really great. Yeah, so because that was the, the concern was mm -hmm. um, with – uh, Ballast Point going into their downtown Disney and stuff like that was okay. Like you have Green Flash. I don't even know. If, are they still in business? I know they were like they they are, but not like they were. I don't see their stuff around anymore. No, but but that's there's a few beer spots in California Adventure that still sells California craft beer, like actual craft, like independent. Um, and so I was very excited to see an, uh, bottle logic actually going to be serving there, but yeah, well, they will. I'm sure once it reopens, they, they probably will. It's a, it's a, it's a make sense partnership. Oh, Anaheim so, and Anaheim. Yeah. Yep. 
So, so, but as far as like, yeah, so Scott and I have known each other for 23 years. Um, we've basically yeah, started off as a couple of squeaky uh, teenagers. Now we're into a couple of groaning adults who have back aches and <laughs> bodies that are getting old. And we got the bellies, the beer guts. Uh, but uh, as far as like uh, the future for beers and buddies, uh, like so we, so Scott and I homebrew. Well, I homebrew and Scott assists. I drank homebrew if I can get it. Yeah, um, <laughs> but I mean, if if uh, if we won the lottery, we'd probably end up opening up a brewery together. I mean, that would be the that would be the cool thing. That'd be the ideal thing. Um, but who knows? Uh, who knows COVID and just life in general. But uh, as far as the future goes, yeah, so Colorado's on our wish list for another beer whirlwind for Beers and Buddies. Uh, like I said, Northeast is one of my things. And if we could ever get to Europe, I think that would be – I'd probably end up being more drunk than sober. If I... And I've been to Europe twice, and I wasn't allowed to drink either time that I was there. Not because I was of age, but because of who I was with and the organizations I was with. I, did, I wasn't allowed to drink. That doesn't mean I didn't. It just means I had to do it on the DL. But if I ever get back there, oh no, oh no, I am going to sample the the beer scene Continent. like I am really hungry at the buffet. I don't yep. even know if that makes sense, but that's that's how that's it's how I'm right. gonna be. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be awesome. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's uh, kind of interesting that would be unique about beers and buddies. Um, I just okay. Here's how about, how, well, no, because I know what you're gonna share. Uh -oh. I was going to say say the most embarrassing thing you can remember about each other, but I already know. I think I know what you I'm not going to share that publicly. <laughs> <laughs> that, the most embarrassing thing. I did thing it that... the other day, by the way. I did it the other day here at the house. Oh, gosh. I know. I know. I shouldn't have, but I did. The question was, please don't tell me you scared the, the, the children and town folk. I mean, <laughs> Just the oldest one. Oh gosh, really? Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Oh the gosh. child was the child needed some uh, movement. She's uh, <laughs> scarred for life now. Yeah, she is. But nonetheless, I don't even think you've ever done anything super embarrassing. No, but even then, so was, yeah. kind of going back to so Scott. This is where also we Scott and I differ on the, the beers and buddy side. So um, I like scotch. He likes bourbon, uh, but. At the same time, but craft beer in general, we tend to agree on, except for he's more hop forward. I like more, I don't know, other than hop forward. <laughs> other than hop forward. Yeah. Well, and it's not that I don't like scotch. I do like scotch. One, it's just a hell of a lot more expensive to buy. Uh, but yeah, two. But quality over quantity. Wow. Wow. Um, I'm going to pretend another... you didn't say that because I've tasted a lot of scotch. I'm not naming Johnny Walker. Um, <laughs> look, here's the, the thing. I, I love Isla Scotches. You give me an Arbeg, mm -hmm. you give me an, a, a Lagavulin, a Laphroaig. Um, I, I, I'll drink that all day. Um, uh, what's one that you guys like? Uh, the Aber, uh, Oh, that's Jen. So my wife yeah. loves, it's, um, Abelor, Abunad. Ab Abelor. Yeah, it's Abelor. It's a it's a sherry, it's a sherry cask single malt, but it is full cast strength, so it'll put some hair in your chest. Right, but there's some. I've got a I got a bourbon at home right now that's 136 proof. Um, I mean, it'll it'll Tastes it'll, like it'll rock. It'll rock. Yeah, it'll rock you. Um, but no, I just like those sweet toffee, caramel, vanilla, smoky see, you, tobacco. See, you give me crap for liking sweet stouts and stuff like that, but yet you're going yeah, for the no, more no, sugary it, because forward. Because the pastries down to bourbon liquid. are not the same thing. Don't even start. We got more sugar. We got more sugar. No, there's no bourbon sugar in bourbon. Corn. It's corn. Well, then what's in the corn? <laughs> okay, is, what's there in the corn? Bit, which is sugar. It's starch. Yeah, well, well yeah, and here's the problem. And for those of you who, who like whiskey... I'm this black sheep of all my friends because, well, not all. My friend Ashley is with me on this one, but she and I are it. We're the outliers because everyone else is like, scotch, scotch, scotch. And I'm like, I like scotch, but bourbon trump scotch any day of the week. For me, nope. for nope, me, nope, 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 nope. I know I'm going to get flack. You know what? Get, send me the email. Send me the comments. Go right ahead. We got an email. Send it. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I don't care. <laughs> So as far as like uh, any like future uh, buddy stuff, um, 
So, oh, just kind of a side note. So one of the things I would recommend for any of you and your beer buddies to do um, for, oh, just you, audience, who's watching this, is actually, you know what? Brew a beer together. You yeah. will, it's definitely <laughs> an experience to brew a beer together um, and then to to go through that and be tedious and be freaked out if it's going to, like, if you screwed it up or not or if you added too much or did it too late. Or and, added hops when you shouldn't have added hops. Oh, gosh, so much early. Um, yeah, not so much enough, but not but so the, much that it's the nice part is. Okay. But still, uh, it's you can buy. I'm not talking Mr. Beer kits. I'm talking about just a basic. Oh, don't do that. You can buy a kit for about fifty bucks, and then buy a homebrew kit for maybe about another hundred dollars or two. And it, it's really expensive to get set up at first, but once you have it, you can buy kits for about fifty bucks a pop. And you don't even have to write your own recipes. It's really, it's almost idiot proof as long as you keep everything clean. But brew some beers with your friends um, because Scott and I did that and it was a really fun experience. Um, and thankfully the beer had turned out and it wasn't disgusting, which was what no, we were told. It was good. It was we were good. told by people that our first beer was going to be gross and it wasn't. It wasn't. It was very nice. Um, and I like to brew beer. I just don't do it on my own. I'll do it with other people. I mean, I know how to brew beer. If if my life depended on it and you gave me a beer and said, brew this or I'm going to kill you and your family and your dogs, I'd be like, all right, go ahead. I'm not brewing this beer. No, I could do it. I could work my way through it. I wouldn't say it tastes great, but that's why you have people like Aaron because that's the difference between me and I'm like, oh, I made a beer once. It tastes good. Let me open a brewery. No, it tastes like crap. No, you need people who know what they're doing. Yep. So something what I'll try to do for Scott um, is like, We'll try to, when he does visit here, we try to brew a beer. Um, yeah. Try to do a brew day. Um, the last one we actually did, believe it or not, together was our coconut brown ale. Yeah. And I don't get to drink much of this stuff, by the way, folks, because then I have to go home and I get like a bottle. So I don't know, money, time, and I get a bottle out of it. I don't know. There was one beer we brewed. I didn't get any of it. Because the IPA. Yeah, the, yeah, the IPA that failed, actually. Yeah. 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 That's when I had to dump. It happens. But so speaking of that, uh, this weekend, I'm going to be brewing in another homebrew IPA. So, using Galaxy? Using Galaxy, so, I heard. So this one I'm really excited for. Um, so I'm going to be using I'm going to be modifying my last IPA. So if you guys follow us on social media, on our Instagram page, I posted it. Uh, I made a sing – technically, it's not a dry hop, technically. Um, but I used uh, – Amarillo, Simcoe, and oh gosh, forgetting there's like there's like three or four hops plus Bravo was the bittering hop, um, and then I use El Dorado as I use hop oil. Uh, this actually was one milliliter for five gallons of hop oil. So rather than dry hop, I used the hop oil for uh, my American IPA. It turned out great, and, tech, and also is gluten reduced, which means my wife could drink it. Anyways. So I'm modifying that recipe uh, to actually use Cascade and Galaxy Hops. Ooh, yum. Oh, I didn't know you were using Cascade, too. Yep. So my bittering hop mm. is going to be Bravo again um, because I like the um, – the, the, it's more floral. It's less piney um, than, say, Magnum. Uh, Magnum has a little bit more of a spicy bite, whereas Bravo is going to be more of a floral um, bittering. And then I'm going to be adding Cascade. Um, about midway through the boil. Yeah, I'm going to ask and then, that. And so, because and, Cascade is actually, it's, it's a versatile hop. You can use it as bittering or aromatics. So I'm going to use it mid-boil, and then at the end of my boil for my IPA will be uh, Cascade and a lot of Galaxy. And a lot of Galaxy. Not my favorite hop, but I do like Galaxy. Yeah, when you pair those two together, pair it up, it's like a match made in heaven. And then I actually am going to bring back the El Dorado hop oil again. reason right. why... Yes, the reason why is the El Dorado hop oil adds aromatics, uh, like almost like peach, um, like this nice, beautiful, like floral and almost citrusy, peachy kind of smells. Paired that with the uh, mango and tropical fruit esters that Galaxy has. Um, also, the biggest difference is um, I'm going to be changing up my yeast. So, um, so last time I did the uh, this White Labs, uh, it's just the California ale, it's basically, it's a, it's a standard yeast to use for like IPAs, ale, regular ales. I'm going to be using my, uh, it's called Coastal Haze. It's actually, so technically it will be a hazy IPA, Scott. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Okay. So, 
<laughs> but we have 17 seconds left. So, so from our beer to your buddy, I guess. All right. All right. Cheers, guys. Have a good night. Salud. <laughs>